Hello, here we go. Map producing the dupe part C when we finally get to Hadoop. And uh, let's get going. Um, too many arms. All right, so we're in this first, this little set of slides here. We cover the overall architecture and the ecosystem. Hadoop is powerful because of those 350 other soft systems I mentioned at the introduction to this whole slide set. There's just lots of other capabilities, databases, and uh, filters, and libraries, and things that work with Hadoop, SQL interfaces, and so on. Okay, here are some uh, general remarks on Hadoop, which is an Apache software foundation project, one of the most famous, perhaps initially the most famous. I still remember when it first came out and the excitement it had in the distributed systems community, which I'm part of. And it was um, the, one of the very first MapReduce frameworks, and I say one of the very first major Hadoop projects. It was also big because it was all written in Java, one of the first great successes for Java for systems. It's got a lot of capabilities. Even though it's actually only doing MapReduce, that's not highly non-trivial, because it does lots of general data processing capabilities. And as I've mentioned, maybe, so, well, who knows what the fraction is, but some large fraction, like 75% of big data problems can today be run with Hadoop. My guess is that fraction will go down in time. Um, its uh, management of distributed systems is very important, because it is, an example of what we call horizontal scaling. That um, what you want to do is to get uh, run lots of relatively cheap computers to solve big data problems, rather than trying to really boost up in a very expensive fashion individual servers to cope with large data problems. Another key aspect that was correctly built in from the first was fault tolerance. The Doob is super fault tolerant because it writes everything to disk, whereas other systems, which I tend to be more familiar with, keep data on the fly, running around. And who knows what happens when parts of the system they run around in have faults. Um, and the Spark is probably more popular, but um, I'm still not certain it actually runs as many jobs. Even if you are using Spark or other systems, you're gonna use HDFS, the Hadoop file system, because it's a dominant file system in the big data community. Yarn is Reasonably popular, but I think Kubernetes is far more, far more um, hyped at the moment, and likely to remain so. Mesos is a competitor to Yarn, and actually, it sort of got beat on the head by Kubernetes. So whether how it quite it compares to Yarn, I don't know. Originally, it was more popular than Yarn. Spark is actually not so popular based just on its MapReduce capabilities. But because Spark can actually do other things, it can spawn lots of jobs. Uh, if you're um, running a ride-hailing ride company, uh, systems like Spark and the uh, European equivalent of Flink can be invoked to spawn a new task to process a new driver or a new passenger. So let's get on with Hadoop. All right, so here is, it's sort of a variant of the, um, 350 software slides, but organized in a little more um, uh, structured fashion. In fact, it's sort of the original version of that slide when we only had uh, 40 instead of 350 um, uh, systems. And you can sort of see how it, it's sort of a variant also of the picture I got of the NIST use case with uh, data analytics at the top is the user, up here, user. And he's interacting with an orchestration system. Remember, we saw that in the first slide set for this group. Then we have these high level things Shark, which is now Spark SQL, and various other um, high level systems. Pig, which is meant to integrate, what does integrate many uh, Hadoop runs together. Then we have these variants of Hadoop. Um, and we've already mentioned Giraffe, which is. Probably, uh, which is the graph version. These ones here are really for a different problem class, Storm, S4, Samsung, which Storm now replaced by Heron is the most important. Those are streaming systems. 
Hammer tear spark a variance of if you like of a, of a dupe addressing uh, special cases or more uh, advanced cases. Uh, then we have to do some communications and reductions. That's what the reduce operator does. Spark a dupe. A dupe doesn't have any much. Just has these built-in sorts and merges and shuffles. And it supports general reductions. It doesn't do any sophisticated communication. Spark does. And then we have uh, the data for Hadoop comes from, say, either directly from the file system, HDFS, which is down here, or it comes through a database subsystem, HBase, Cassandra, Cumulo, or it comes from a SQL interface pouring data into the Hadoop. Then we have to man, this runs in a cluster that has to be managed by Mesos or Yarn or Condor or Talk or what have you. And then we need DevOps. Uh, system, user, I mean, system defined, software defined systems. Okay, there we are. That's the old version of the 350 um, package with a time when we could write it in a, in a more clear fashion. Here's another one of my favorite slides that we produced. It tries to show how here and here, classic map producers are dupe. And this is what, uh, this is uh, incredibly important. And it's either for actual reductions or the case where there's no reductions. Called pleasingly parallel or map only. Some of the word map only is just what I use. Uh, not many other people use it. I think it's quite a nice term. Um, anyway, it's pretty important. Over here we have Heron and Storm and Samsung and S4 streaming. Here we have Spark, where machine learning starts coming in. Here we have Giraffe, and sort of a bit of Spark, but not so good. And Twisted Tools tries to do both of these. And we ignore this one over here, which is for some people use shared memory architectures rather than distributed memory. The vast majority of big data problems are done on what they call distributed memory, or, or um, um, which you, you do not. Or every you have a set of independent computers, each with their own memory, prob um, probably their own disks, and of course their own CPUs, and you distribute the job over those independent machines. They use the communication network to synchronize it. And as I've stressed, synchronization for Hadoop is not so important. Well, this slide makes a very simple point. <coughs> that almost anything to do with statistics is map produce. Because the statistics are always doing a sum of uh, events of, I don't know, the weight of the event or the uh, some probability of the event times a quantity associated with the event like the average number of hippopotami in the event or something like that. And then you have to sum over those and then divide by the total. The sum over all the quantities here, all the ages, and all the entries, which is the number of records or number of people, <coughs> both of those sum is a map produced if you execute it in, uh, in uh, parallel. So you know, those can all be done very well with a dupe. Uh, we often have... Um, Histograms uh, in the field I work in, particle physics, discovering Higgs boson, lots of histograms are very important. Histograms can be accumulated in a distributed fashion and then added up to find the total quantity in each bin uh, using MapReduce. Uh, there are systems like PIG, Apache PIG is not the most sweet name I've seen. Not like a dupe. A dupe has actually got pizzazz. I don't think Peak has pizzazz attached to it. Anyway, it's actually a, a higher level system built on top of a dupe that allows you to um, um, have lots of map produced cores. And as I mentioned, the Higgs boson was discovered with histograms. I don't think they were actually implemented with map produced because the Higgs boson software system was built before map produced came along. All right, that's just a small note to say how pervasive. Map produced type problems are. So this is the Hadoop ecosystem putting this all together, and uh, this lecture will do the map produced and HDFS only. Uh, <coughs> and if you like map produced, it's the programming model.
of a distributed programming system. <coughs> and this critical technology, which is actually probably, it's going to last longer than the Hadoop itself. I think Hadoop will be replaced. You know, it's the dominant, I mean, it's already starting to get replaced by Spark. That will accelerate. But something which will probably survive is HDFS, the Hadoop distributed file system, because it's such a natural way. We, we, we may cross be HDFS plus plus or something, but HDFS is a critical concept to describe the way you store data distributed over the disks of many, many, many machines. So as I mentioned, this is Apache. The Apache Foundation is an amazing invention, uh, which has produced hundreds and hundreds of different software systems. They stress community, because the concept of <coughs> Apache is a piece of software. You put the software in GitHub, around that GitHub you produce a community which commits software and improves it and tests it. And um, as I mentioned, the HDFS was effectively the Google file system. And um, this started some time ago. Remember, 2004 was the famous paper. Here we have January 2006. Uh, we put in Hadoop, and it started off as a subset of Lucene. Lucene was a search engine project. It's actually no longer nearly as famous. It's actually a pretty, still a pretty important uh, piece of software. And um, obviously, it's now split off to become its own Apache project. Uh, like most of the big data software, it's written in Java. There's a slight trend away to fancy languages like Go and Scala, but uh, Java is still the dominant language used in the big data world. The people contributing are Yahoo, which sort of started it. Cloudera, which is a little company who like Hortonworks, whose business is to take a dupe and support it. There's lots, and it, you know, in this world, you know, trying to find business models. The business model of building software proprietary and keep it to yourself tends not to be so easy because people want to. They don't want to be dependent on you. But the business model of uh, working on an open source project and then becoming an expert at deploying that open source project with other open source projects, that is a very successful business. It's a business model used by Red Hat for Linux. Um, it's used for Zen. It's used for, um, or by Hortonworks and Cloudera in this case. It's a very common model which will continue to be successful, I think. Here is the uh, current uh, architecture of Hadoop at a very high level and a very large font size. We have a cluster. On that cluster, we have some sort of storage. We have a Hadoop file system, which describes the files in a distributed fashion. We have YARM, which schedules the processes and tasks. And then we have the mappers and the reducers and the shufflers running under the, uh, on top of that. Here is an example, actually a simpler version of the earlier diagram. Here we have map, here we have HDFS. On top of that, we build the MapReduce system. We have Pig, which allows multiple MapReducers to run. Mahout, which is a library. Hive, which gives you query, SQL query capability. Monitoring is Apache and Barry. Uzi is the workflow. Zookeeper is a concurrency control system. Used a lot in fault tolerance. HBase is the NoSQL database which you can use. And then you want to do, a, well, you know what, REST and ODBC and Spook are. These are data, uh, data standards and used for being able to transport data between different places.